All right, so this first question right here is just an introduction to uh, an example I want to work on with you guys today. Is your money worth more now or later? What do you guys think? Now. Yes. Now? Why? Why is it worth more now than later? Like $100 now? Is it going to be worth more now than it's worth later? Yeah, because of the increasing minimum wage causes all the prices. Yeah, because of all the inflation, interest rates, when you consider investments and such like that. Yes, that's true. And so we're going to be looking at a, a problem uh, that concerns that question today. But the, the majority of this uh, DNA is this right here. This is the purpose. Use uh, fundamental family calculus one to calculate the area between the curves in each illustration. We talked about this yesterday, and uh, I, want to I want to do some more exploring with it. Now, just looking at the picture, look at this area and look at this area. Would you guys say those areas are the same? No, no you don't think it's the same? Anybody disagree? Just looking at that picture, they totally don't look the same. What's different? Like, how what changes from one graph to the next? The y coordinates change. <coughs> what what did you say? The the reds under the x axis right here. Okay. Now, yesterday we talked about this, and we talked about how if I wanted to find the area of this, let's see, let's go. Um, with the blue, you would find the area of the blue function between 1 and 3, and then you would find the area of the red function. And then what would you do with those two areas? You'd subtract them. If you took away the, the area of the red function, this is what you would get, right? You would be left with the area that you want. And so that's what we have right here. We have the blue function the area underneath the blue function, and we subtract the area underneath the red function. All right, so let's, let's do this first, and then I'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it with this one over here. So I want to clear out some room up here to, to write. We have the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared minus 4x plus 10. Now I'm just copying this right here. Now instead of um, writing the integral again, I'm just going to combine this with this one, which is allowed. So we're going to have minus 4x minus x squared. Now make sure you put that in parentheses so you remember to distribute the negative. And then we're going to do all of this uh, with the, to the dx. Okay. So we're going to do the, the interval of that. Let's take the antiderivative of that. Now before I take the antiderivative of that, always ask yourself the question, can you simplify it, make it look prettier? Can we? You can't make that pretty. All right. Let's see, we got make this uh, addition, we'll distribute the negative right here, and then now we're going to combine things together. So we'll have from 1 to 3, we'll have uh, 2x squared, because there's an x squared there, and there's an x squared there. And then we have negative 8x, and then plus the 10. All right? So the first thing you do with fundamental theorem of calculus is you do the antiderivative. So when we do the antiderivative, we get x to the third, and then we would divide it by 3, so we have 2 thirds. And then we would get uh, x to the second. And then we would divide the 8 by 2, so we would get 4. And then we have plus 10 to the x, or times x. And then we're going to plug in 1 and 3. Well, first we'd plug in 3. So let's plug in 3 first. All right, now we're doing the algebra stuff. Plugging in 3, we would get uh, 2 over 3 times 3 raised to the third power minus 4x. No, not x, 4 times 3. And we're going to add 10 times 3 to that. And then, oh man, I'm running out of space. And then, uh, oh yeah, that's supposed to be squared right there. Good, good call. Now we're going to subtract. We're going to plug the 1 into that. So that's going to be 2 thirds minus 4 plus 10. Uh, we can do the 1 in our head pretty easily, so that's what we get right there. All right, so let's do some simplifying. Um, let's see, negative 4 and 10 is 6, right? So we have 6 and 2 thirds. So this is just really 6 and 2 thirds. So we're subtracting 6 and 2 thirds right there. Let's figure out these ones right here. That's 27. When I multiply 27 times 2 over 3, the 27 and the 3 would cancel out, and the 27 would become 9, the 3 would become 1. So now we just have 9 times 2, which is 18, minus, this is going to be a 9 right here, times the 4. 9 times 4 is 36. Then we're going to plus 30, because 10 times 3 is 30. Then we're going to subtract 6 and 2 thirds. Almost done with our, our problem here. Uh, now we have 36. Negative 36 and 30 would be a negative 6. What is 18 and negative 6? 12. 12, so we have 12. 
and we're going to subtract 6 and 2 thirds. So when I do that, 12 minus 6 is going to be 6, and I subtract 2 thirds from that, that would be 5 and 1 third. So you can have this as your answer, or you can have, um, what is that, uh, 16 over 3 is your answer. On, and then you could also make this into a decimal, which would be a, a repeating decimal because we have a 3 in the bottom and a number that's not divisible by 3 on top. Okay, so we got 5 and 1 third for the area of this. Now this one right here, I set it up the same, except you see the blue function, the blue equation is a little different. And that's because it's moved down a little bit. You see over here it says plus 10, right here it says plus 5. Right here, I also added a, a minus 5 because we shifted this one down 5 as well. So you see the 5 is not over here, the minus 5. So when I think about how we, what we did for this one to find the answer, this one is different because I'm not going to be taking away an area. If I found the area of the blue function, I would be finding the area of just this part right here. And then I would have to find the area of the red function. Now, just as it stands, if I found the area of the red function, what would that area be? It would be a negative area, correct? So, let's think about this. This is set up the same way as this one over here. The blue function minus the red function. Um, the red function in this one is going to be negative, though. <coughs> you guys see that? And if I'm subtracting the negative, I'm really going to be adding a positive. You still with me? So, doing what we did with this one, where we take the area of the top curve and subtract the area of the bottom curve, that's the same thing as this. Even though the red one is below the x-axis, it all works out still. And then if we do some math, we can see that it still works out. Check this out. Um, let's see, we got from 1 to 3, x to the second minus 4x plus 5. And then I'm going to subtract from that 4x minus x squared minus 5 dx. Man, that thing looks nasty. So I distribute this negative right here. So it's going to be negative 4x, and it's going to be positive x squared, and that's going to be positive 5. And look what we get. How many x squareds total do we have for this interval? We have uh, 1, 2. Same as above, 2x squared. Then how many x, x's do we have? Negative 8x's. And then we have plus 10. Does this look familiar? It should. Does it look familiar? This is exactly the same as this guy right here. So even though the graphs got shifted down, we still do the same. We follow the same rules. We take the area of the top function, the, the greater function, and then, uh, or the curve, however you want to call it, and then we subtract the lower curve. And then we get the area between the two spaces in that interval. So to answer this last question, in the second illustration, the red curve is below the x-axis. Does this change the way we find the area between the two curves? The answer is no.